92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. We are streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5. Audio, soon to be video, in fact, uh, RTC Channel 4. That's why Scott's back in the studio. Good morning, Scott. Good morning. Sir. Nice that you haven't been here for a while. Nice to have you back. It's a good welcome home. Did you find your coffee cup back there? Did, did you? Did. All right, excellent. On this Monday morning, time for our Doc Talk program. Doc Talk brought to you by Woodlawn Hospital of Rochester. And once again, we welcome back to the studio OBGYN specialist, Dr. Eric Seward. Good morning, Doc. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. Might as well be here for a, a good Monday morning late in August. Why not, right? Yeah, it's going to be a one of the last hot ones, I hope. Exactly. And the topic today will be... Well, I, I, I thought I'd start with a story. Um, it, when I was in med school, and th this is kind of standard, um, you always hear about uh, medical students uh, being hypochondriacs and um, or just, you know, having whatever disease we're studying. And uh, out to set the setting, it was a February morning. Okay. And we had lectures from 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. Oh, wow. And then we had a, a, a little break for lunch. And, and then we came back and there was like a workshop kind of thing in the afternoon. And this was sort of the daily routine. And it was it was about, it was well, it was right before lunch. It must have been the 12 o'clock um, lecture. And I've been in this dark lecture hall in a February, you know, snowy, nasty <laughs> February morning. And a, a guy comes in and he starts talking about the thyroid gland. And I'm, I'm sitting there in a stupor listening to this guy talk about the thyroid. And, and the first thing he said was something along the lines of, yeah, you know, when your thyroid is underactive, you, you're sort of slow to react to things. And I was like, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and you, you, you know, you, you gain a little weight. And I'm like, what? Oh, man. <laughs> and I, I started, he just ran right down the list of things. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I've got hypothyroidism. I was just sure of it. And I, I left there and went and sat at a table of, of eight students, all of my buddies. And we're sitting there kind of quietly. And one of my friends says, you know, I think I have hypothyroidism. <laughs> and somebody across the table said, by God, I think I have hypothyroidism. And... Um, I, you know, sort of drove the point home that you, you sit in a dark uh, lecture <laughs> out, uh, hall for six, seven hours every day. And, or I think everybody in the state of Indiana in the month of February <laughs> probably right, exactly has right, hypothyroidism. Right, right. But the, you know, it, it drives the point home. And I wanted to, um, this is a very common problem that we deal with, um, issues of particularly the thyroid gland. But start with sort of general endocrine organs. Um, there's a whole specialty sort of dedicated to endocrine diseases and problems. And there's some very interesting and subtle things that I'm probably not going to get too much into. But even but beyond just being an internal medicine specialist. Yes, there's, okay. there, there, are, there are endocrinologists okay. that are uh, subspecialized basically from internal medicine. Okay. And, uh, and what that would mean basically is, and I don't know the details on, on, on what those fellowships are like uh, per se, but they would do a three-year residency after med school in internal medicine, and then they would subspecialize in endocrine for probably a couple more years, maybe a year or two more. Um, but endocrine organs are, are, are glands in our body that affect distant, parts of the body. In other words, um, I, I like to think of the adrenal gland, which is this thing that sits on top of the kidney. We have all heard of adrenaline. Well, adrenaline is actually a lot of different things. It's epinephrine and norepinephrine, etc. But these are, are chemicals that are produced and they affect our brain, they affect um, our muscles, they affect all sorts of bits of our body, our metabolism. And that's one example. Sex hormones, um, testosterone, estrogen, right. are another. Uh, the ovaries and testicles are another good example of endocrine organs because they produce these these substances and they affect our entire. They affect our hair patterns and they affect our, you know, how our demeanor and, and how we approach problems and things like that. Um, the thyroid, in specific, is a little gland that sits in your neck. And if you if you could like touch your Adam's apple, it's just usually right below the um, Adam's apple. And historically, probably the biggest problem with with the thyroid gland were goiters. And to get into that just a little bit, the the th thyroid hormones are are iodine based hormones. Uh, so they they require the element iodine uh, to to function basically to make their their 
their thyroid um, hormone product at the end. And there's there's a variety of these, but they're all iodine based. And at one point in time, um, the central part of the country essentially didn't have iodine. Um, iodine comes from salt, okay. comes from seafood, right. um, comes from the ocean, basically. And, and if you're living in good old Rochester, Indiana, it's <laughs> circa 1850, you're probably not going to have a whole lot of access to right. seafood. And, and so prior to there being iodine infused into our food, um, essentially we we were without a lot of times. And so if you didn't have the proper tools to build thyroid hormone, the thyroid would work and work and work and work and it would hypertrophy and get bigger and it would form this lump. And you, you see these historic photos. Now a days, uh, those problems aren't as prevalent. You can still have goiters, but goiters are, are not the sort of the big ticket. They're more of a, an issue of history, something we kind of stamped out with nutrition. Um, now, if you pick up a Morton salt, you know, one of those little canister things, um, it'll say iodinized salt. And there are even places that like water supplies are, are you know, these are things that are fortified in a lot of our foods. And, um, and so therefore we don't have that problem much anymore. But thyroid problems still exist. There's a, a whole lot of, of issues out there with thyroid the most the most common one by far is hypothyroidism and hypothyroidism is something that is is most of the time directed by what we call an autoimmune disorder called Hashimoto's thyroiditis and I don't know who Hashimoto was <laughs> probably probably some famous doctor but um ultimately somebody worthy of getting his name stuck on something it's very memorable but basically um autoimmune disorders are are interesting they're a classic example of an autoimmune disorder would have been like room uh, like rheumatic fever and then for whatever reason the strep that causes rheumatic fever has a, a little bit of it that looks like heart valves and so in the old days, a lot of times untreated strep throat would elicit this immune response that would then attack heart valves. And in time, people would get rheumatic heart disease uh, because their valves would go faulty because of just years and years of sort of wearing down at, at, at sort of the behest of their own immune system. Well, there are a whole bunch of problems like this. You can run down, there's a, you know, hundred on on the list of things that potentially can go wrong but Hashimoto's thyroiditis is a process of attacking thyroid tissue and it's a very common uh, autoimmune disorder um, I I don't know the exact numbers but it's something on the order of nine nine out of ten people with Hashimoto's thyroiditis are women it tends to pop up in women in their 30s and 40s and okay. early 50s it's sort of pre perimenopausal a lot okay. of time um, you're talking about overactive thyroid. This is underactive. This is thyroid. underactive. Yeah. Okay. And Hashimoto's thyroiditis, um, it, it kind of has an interesting um, process. Usually, when it first starts, these antibodies attack the thyroid, and the thyroid responds by just overproducing thyroid. So it actually has a short-term hyperactive component to it, and then long-term, the thyroid gland just sort of burns out. And um, and that's probably the most common thing that we see on a day-to-day -day basis, bread and butter, thyroid issues in, okay. in an office. Um, there, there are overactive thyroid issues too. Graves disease is probably the most common. There was a, um, the senior president of Bush had Graves disease, ha has Graves disease, I guess. But, um, and there were a couple of famous episodes of him having issues while he was president um, with hyperthyroidism. Thyroid uh, is kind of a, a weird little gland. It's, I, I love this gland because it gives you an excuse for all the things you want to have an excuse for. It's a very controlling gland. Well, apparently. Yeah, it was, <laughs> kind of has its hand in every little thing uh, from metabolism. Right. So when somebody has a hyperthyroidism, they tend to be sort of over-metabolic. They tend to... They tend to uh, burn their engines hot. Their heart rate tends to be faster. They tend to have that. Um, the, one of the the signs of an overactive thyroid is if you can look at somebody and see the whites of their eyes all around their pupils. Um, you know, and, and we all know people like that. Sure. Sure. <laughs> and um, 
you, you always wonder about testing the thyroid in that in that situation the the super hyper you know can't sit still kind of person uh, on the flip side um hypothyroidism is is sort of it affects people's sort of mood it's sort of a depressant kind of scenario people tend to have a slower metabolism they gain weight easier they have dry hair okay um, just lot, lots of little things. And I, I always think, boy, if I wanted an excuse for why I can't remember something <laughs> or why I gained 10 pounds or, you know, why I don't feel like I feel like a slug, you know, on any given day, doggone thyroid, you know. <laughs> but um, truth of the matter is um, it is a fairly common thing. And it's something that I usually routinely screen for with, like, general health screenings and people that are over 40. Um, it, it's just high yield. And it's kind of... a a a good thing to fix in somebody because it's fairly simple to fix and it's fairly yes and it's fairly um fairly result oriented you get somebody on thyroid medicine and they kind of perk up and they start to feel better um there are a number of different thyroid medicines um basically you can replace the key components of thyroid um, one of the things that I always like to point out with, with thyroid, and people come into the office and they're, um, this is a confusing thing, but our brains are sort of command central. They are the things that are monitoring our blood and telling, you know, the, the sending out signals. And, and it's a, a two-part signal system. The central brain is looking at things like thyroid. And if it sees that there's not enough, it sends a signal to the pituitary gland, which is a little command central right behind your nose. And it it basically fires out the stimulating hormones that tell the gland to work harder. So if the gland is underactive, you're going to have an over a higher number on your thyroid stimulating hormone. So in order to stimulate it, it's working harder to make the thyroid gland. Okay. So people come in and they, they wonder, why is my TSH high, but you're telling me my thyroid is low? And that's exactly why. Um, it's you can, you can check thyroid hormones, but there's a whole bunch of different thyroid hormones one can check. And they're dependent a lot on how they're distributed through the body. We oftentimes use free T4, which is one of the active and easier to measure thyroid um, uh, levels that you can get in blood work. Um, But these things are affected by pregnancy. In my world, a lot of times um, you have to adjust thyroid medicines during pregnancy, partly because they ride around on proteins. And the free part, the part that's not attached to a protein is what has function. But there are more of those proteins floating around than pregnancy. And so they tend to absorb more thyroid sure. hormone. And Makes so sense. the thyroid has to work a little right. bit harder. Um, and, and these things become factors in various odd medical conditions. Um, in my world, it's usually pregnancy. But in, you know, in the endocrinology world, it could be a whole lot of different things. Um, but that's that's sort of the, a real simple okay. tutorial on on how one understands why a TSH might be high, and we can't very well measure the the signal hormone from the brain to the pituitary gland. It's a much more difficult thing to measure, just be part of partly because of where it's functional, and so that would be helpful information maybe, but it's just not something that's practical to check, and so we we don't usually. Okay. Um, but that's that's probably what we run into the most. You can definitely get cancers, and there's a variety of different cancers of the thyroid gland. Um, a lot of, of issues pop up with either tumors or cancers of the thyroid gland that end up getting uh, burned out. A lot of one of the treatments for problems with the thyroid is to put radioactive thyroid um, iodine, radioactive iodine. Mm-hmm into somebody it gets absorbed mostly by the thyroid and these little hot spots in the thyroid either be they cancers or or tumors or nodules or whatever um, will then burn out the problem is you do that and a lot of times you burn out most of the thyroid right. gland, exactly. and so a lot of people have. Whenever a, a doctor or a, the medicine in general creates a, a problem in somebody, we call that an iatrogenic problem. It's just a fancy word for the doctor did it. <laughs> and right. in these cases, we we know that's you know what we're doing, but we're we're getting rid of something bad by doing by using a medicine fairly effective in some of 
of the things that we run into. Hyperthyroidism sometimes comes from nodules that are overproducing. And so a lot of times you, you have somebody with Graves' disease, you give them radioactive iodine, next thing you know, you've created hypothyroidism that's iatrogenic, a fix for a problem that's harder to fix uh, to a problem that's a little easier to fix. Um, but that said, you know, thyroid cancers okay. um, are, are present too. I don't see them as often. Occasionally we get pregnant patients that come in that have either had radioactive iodine for whatever reason or have a history of thyroid cancers. We usually do during annual exams. I usually poke around on the thyroid just to see if there's a goiter or a nodule. Um, I've found a few over the years. Um, I think most of the time they end up being nothing, but the follow-up to that usually is doing radiology sure. testing sure. And, and, and going from there. Early sometimes testing, sure. sometimes sending for a biopsy right. or something. Dr. Eric Seward is our guest. He's OBGYN at Woodlawn Hospital. And uh, how about uh, next month? Have you thought ahead to that? Oh, gosh. You know, I'm, I'm always willing to take some okay. suggestions. Right. Um, we have, uh, I, I have a, a sort of a... a group of people that are constantly <laughs> feeding me ideas and i'm, get, I'm get, giving uh you know we've had uh topics of of exercise have come right. up um i was i was possibly you know there's a, a variety of things that we could do with menopause um hormone replacement it just seems to be a hot topic always um there's a, a variety of things that we could talk about with regards to birth control um and uh and then we've mentioned alluded to Maybe maybe getting into the season of politics and medicine. Um, <laughs> exactly. There's there's a lot you know with medical policy sure. that could be discussed, and I mean it would almost be fun to have a panel of people because we've got a variety of opinions, even in the the close knit world of of Woodlawn Hospital doctors <laughs> that would you know probably add to that discussion. So it's kind of fun stuff. One of the big medical stories coming out over the weekend from the Indianapolis Star that employees now at IU Health can show a bit of their tattoos. Oh, well, yes. you know, I think it's, it, it would be harder, and you know, it's the same with schools. It would be harder and harder to hire anybody. Exactly. <laughs> I think the think majority of people have tattoos. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I thought I'd end by um, telling one more story. Sure. Um, so I had this lady who was, she was a pharmacist at the hospital I was working at, and um, up in Wisconsin, they have this big... Um, it's a cross-country ski race called the Birkbeiner. And, uh, the, and and this lady was somebody who competed in the Birkbeiner. And she was, she had gotten third in the Birkbeiner. And she had gotten, then she had gotten fifth the next year. And she had gotten seventh the next year. And she got ninth or tenth the year after that. <laughs> and she came in all upset. Now, this lady was 40 or 41 right. years old. And so she said, in my office, a fit-looking lady, you know. Yeah. Um, not at all the kind of person you would think had thyroid issues but she said something's wrong with me i got 10 fish here in the brick binder and i'm like how many people are in this thing and she's like oh there were five thousand or something i'm like well 10 sounds pretty good you know and and uh not good enough for her no not good no. enough for her and she she kind of gave me um heck about it and so you know she's a, a friend and some a colleague somebody i worked with and so i'm like i gave ran a whole battery of tests everything came back normal but oddly enough her her, her thyroid came back a little out of whack. Um, her TSH was, I think, normal high at that lab was like four or four and a half, and hers came back like 10. <laughs> and so I, I started her on some thyroid medicine, and uh, and she came in um, a week after the Birkbeiner with her third place medal. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> she, and she, I, no matter what I might ever say, she's convinced the thyroid gland is, is exactly. you know. Now, uh, uh, along the same notes, um, thyroid has been one of those things that's been tried as a performance enhancing medicine or a weight loss medicine, and it does not work okay. because what happens is our, our bodies adjust very quickly to it. Once they see it's there, then we stop making it right. ourselves right and so if you if you put thyroid in your system it, it that function really doesn't work and if you put way too much thyroid in your system you run the risk of, of creating heart attacks arrhythmias um you know strokes other right. other you know issues that you know if you if you're way overactive you can you can create problems so that that doesn't seem to work but in her case um it did in her case a little bit of thyroid made all the difference exactly. tenth, the, tenth the third dr eric seward <laughs> our guest this morning on doc talk doc talk of course brought to you by woodlawn hospital in rochester as always dr seward we appreciate your time hey thanks I appreciate for the information being here. today great you bet see you in a month